All right, in this video, we're gonna do a quick rundown on how to do dimensions in Rhino. Uh, it's relatively straightforward. You wanna go into a top view like this. One thing you wanna do is when you set up your section, you wanna line it up with your plan. And these white lines right here are just, if you go back to the layout view, these are just kind of grid lines uh, or lines that connect the two drawings. Now, if you go back to top, you'll see that I have dimensions laid out. Probably the most important things for stairs are the treads and risers. You can see I labeled an individual riser and then the collective riser from the bottom right here to the top and I labeled the dimension and you can notice I also labeled 14 equal risers at whatever the dimension is here at seven and three quarters each. Um, and I did the same thing for the treads. Notice it says 14 equal treads at whatever the dimension is here. One thing for the, the stairs, if I go to this real quick, I just wanna show you that there is this dash line for the specific stair I'm looking at, which is just um, kind of a, an extension. If you look at it in elevation, that's this line over here. It's just kind of hovering over it. So in plan, you wouldn't see it. So you need to dash it in because the actual tread is this dimension. And as you can see, that's the dimension I'm showing here. Again, this is a little bit confusing stair. Usually you might have a nosing or something. Uh, and this dash line in the center is, uh, if it's confusing for anyone, it's just kind of the structural piece holding up the stairs. So that's what's going on here. You can see it, uh, this, this line over here and there's some tension cable is going on over here. So that's just the, the stair. So let's get into the dimensioning part of this. There's a few things I'm gonna mention which are like technical to Rhino and then there's some you know guidance on how you should think about dimensioning. Go back to top view. The way you dimension is you just type dim. And so there's a few different dimensions. There's dim, dim align, dim angle. I'm gonna just use dim align and dim for now. Let me just show you dim. Uh, let's say I wanted to do uh, the riser once again. I'll start here. Uh, again, I'm, this is just for demonstration purposes. It's uh, You shouldn't repeat your dimensions over and over again. So you'll see when I dimension it, you get, um, well, it's continuing right now. This is because if you see I have continuous, you just click it, it turns it off. So that's one thing to note. That's a technical Rhino thing. You'll notice that this dimension doesn't look like the dimension I have in here. Uh, one thing I did is if you look into the layers, I created dim layer and I set it to gray. The, there's a few things going on here. One is the, the dimension I have as an example has these tick lines. This has arrows, this has points, this has fractions. What's going on? If you go to your properties right here, you'll see that there's, this is the dim styles. And so there's a few ways to get into that. If you double click the dimension itself, you get this pop-up window. Uh, that's the same thing as clicking this and going to properties. I recommend just going to properties like this. It's much easier. So one thing you want to do is change it from inch decimal to foot inch architectural. Okay. And then what just happened here? It's not very clear. So it's like thrown out to the side of the page. But if you go back to the layout view, you'll notice that it's actually behaving quite well. And so what's happening here, if we go back to top, is that, let me select this dimension. Uh, the model space scale is set to 96. If you move that down to 10, it gets relatively close to what we want. You'll see that that changed. And then the height here is, I'm setting it to point two. It really just kind of depends on what you think looks right. You don't want it to be too big. And one other thing to note is, if you go down here to arrows, it might look something like this. I'm just expanding it to arrow and arrow heads. You may want to change it to ticks. Now, if you go to architectural, go up here, foot inch architectural, I think it automatically changes it to ticks. Um, but in case it doesn't, it's an arrowhead. And so you may want to change this from 0.1 to 0.125 or whatever you want to select. Uh, don't make it too big, right? You don't want to make it like, uh, I don't know, 0.4 or something. That's ridiculous. And when you go to your layout view, you can't see anything. That just doesn't make any sense. So make it something that's readable from a distance. Obviously, you're, you're adding line weights here. I just think the black dimensions for this scale of a drawing just becomes too dominant and just gets really muddy. So I'm making it gray. Uh, I typically want to make it black, but in this case, I'm making it dark gray. So if I select this, you just see that I'm, I'm trying to select the dimension, but I can't. Um, be aware that you could dimension on the layout view, but I recommend you just actually being in the view. So that's either activating the layout view by click, double clicking into it, which I wouldn't recommend. I would just go to the top view and do that. So selecting this, changing it to dim right there. Uh, that That's kind of like the basics of it, right? And so see, I added riser over here. Um, same thing over here, I added a dimension note, right? So the way you could do that is select the dimension and you scroll back up. You see this little like uh, greater than less than sign? If you go underneath it, just say I kind of press space, space and say riser. Again, usually you wanna type things out in capital letters uh, when you're doing these kind of architectural drawings. And see, it just kind of moved things aside. Uh, I think that's a visual glitch because if I click this again, and if you zoom in, there's a few dimensional uh, kind of gumball controllers. There's this one right here. 
there's another one right here if you zoom in and this one's going to help us control where it's located and see like the glitch it gets fixed now that's like centered again so if i do this and go back to the drawing uh it's, it's kind of all over the place again this isn't the best location of where to place something again that's why i placed it at the bottom and even this isn't very legible in my opinion the words may be a little bit too big, but it's good for now. But this is not very clear, but that's how you'd move the dimension text and string. Okay, so like you can go ahead and click this again and then you can move it. You know, you can do whatever you want with it to make it clear. That's also not very good. Find the best location where the, the text and the dimensions are not on top of the drawing and it gets get super muddied, right? So going back to this, go ahead and click out of that. Now, one thing I want to mention is every time you're dimensioning, you are like going back and changing the dim styles every single time. So again, I'm gonna go, uh, this I'm gonna show you dim align to show you this angled view right here. So if I click uh, the center of this, and then let's say this edge or something, it's it gets angled. And so you, you notice that we got this inch decimal again. So two things, one, you wanna change the edit style of this. So if you, if you go down here and go to edit style, you can actually change the properties of how this defaults whenever you uh, dimension. So you can go ahead here and change it to foot inch. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and change this to 0.2 because that's what I'm always setting it to. And then I think everything else seems fine. So I'll say apply, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. I think this is actually going to Go ahead and just change the default of the dim inch architectural yeah so it didn't actually change what we default to uh, let me turn off continuous okay so then if i go here to foot inch you notice that this is changed to point two now i can also change the model space so let me go ahead and, and do this again uh, edit style so if you change that to 10 click apply okay so now every time i dimension do this here and then I click inch to foot inch it automatically scales properly so that's changing the settings now one thing I want to mention is I have this EQ which means equal uh, and that's something that you you might want to do to just specify that you want you know two or three things you know centered on each other in equal dimension so you could just say EQ so for example here uh, we know the overall length uh, basically from here this is the, the railing dimension you know the overall length and then you can just go ahead and say, you know, one foot, 11 inches from the edge, and then uh, one foot, 11 inches from this edge. And then it's just centered. You just kind of basically allows you to find the center of this um, railing over here. Okay. And that's pretty much all I got for this uh, specific topic. And I'll see you on the next one.